Hey fifth graders, Mr. Bell here. All right, let's get started on your next project. And that is the Autumn Abstract Pumpkin. As you can see here, uh, autumn colors have been used from yellow all the way down through orange into red. And of course the abstract part of this um, would be the designs and patterns and whatnot that you put inside the pumpkin to jazz it up make it look really cool and what you decide to do in the background and down in the grassy area that's that's up to you but um, try to make it look kind of abstract by just adding patterns and stuff in there okay all right well some things to think about on this project are um, your autumn colors um, from yellow all the way to red and you will end up as you paint your pumpkin or color it in uh, you'll end up with analogous colors since you are going from yellow all the way to red. You'll you'll go from yellow. You'll end up as yellow and orange overlap each other. You'll end up with uh, yellow orange and then orange, and as orange and red overlap each other, you'll end up with red orange and of course finishing with red. So that's one thing to think about. Um, another is um, these colors are. Uh, very warm colors. So this from yellow to red analogous color scheme, of course, is in the warm color range. And then you want to stick to uh, colder colors in the background, like blues and purples and greens, of course, down in the grass. Uh, and that will create uh, a really good contrast between lighter colors and your darker, um, cool colors in the background and on the grass. So, and of course, you have abstract uh, designs and patterns and those are your details. So lots of little details to add to it to finish off the uh, project. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, get started on this. So what you're going to need is a um, sheet of paper. If you have thicker paper, that's always better to paint on. And if you don't have paints, um, you'll just have to do this project in markers and crayons. And hopefully you have a Sharpie or some kind of black marker that you can finish it off with. And you'll need some, um, if you have them, uh, some uh, watercolor paints and a uh, little bucket of water and hopefully some paper towels. <laughs> All right, so what you want to start off with first is um, how I like to make a pumpkin is, is to start with the, the middle part first. So I'll do a shape like this in the center. And all pumpkins have a different look to them. You know, you you just get the pumpkin looking the way that you like, but I like to do it in different sections because I can paint in these sections later and then add the marker for the detail, my little abstract patterns in there. I'm going to do this side. And I'll put another section over here. All right, that's fine. And make a stem. It could be straight. It could be really curly. You've been to pumpkin patches. You've seen pumpkins. They all have a different kinds of stems and this one I'm just gonna go like this make it a little 3D put a little part there and put some lines in there like you see in the stems and uh, make it look like it's on the grass I'll add a couple lines to the side there we go if there's any parts on your pumpkin that you don't like you know that's what the eraser's for I kinda don't like this part over here so I'm gonna, even though a lot of pumpkins are kind of flat on the side, I'm, I'm gonna bow mine out a little bit more like that. Okay, now I'm pretty happy with that. All right, so once you have that part done, then you wanna get into the painting. So here we go. Get my paints, and my water ready. I always drag my brush along here, get the extra water off, and start with the yellow up top. You get a lot of yellow on here. Turn the brush and start painting. If you hold it in the silver part, you'll get more control, but everyone's got a place where they like to hold the brush where it's more comfortable for them. Get a little bit. Don't use too much water. Try 
trying to stay inside the lines. We're going to make the top part brighter. And as it goes down towards the bottom, it'll get darker. Almost like the light source is coming down from the top. And I always like to um, just sort of get a little bit going into that's not solid going down into the area. Like this. Sometimes I'll add more along the ridges like this, darken it up a little bit. Look a little more fruity. You can add some more to this layer if you need to. Now wash off your brush and get into the orange. You know, you can test your paints up here in the lid or on another separate sheet of paper if you need to. And I'm going to start around here just to test it out first, and I'm going to work my way up into. The yellow. I'm going to start losing paint on here because I want a little darker here and I want a little bit lighter as I blend it in. As I blend it in with the um, yellow. And sometimes you can go like this to really get it to blend in there good because you don't want any really clean separation between the two colors. You want them to blend in really well, kind of smoothly, you know. Everyone's got their own technique. Not everyone paints the same way. I'm actually using the, the orange in the lid because it's going to be lighter. So I don't want it. I want the orange that I'm putting up into yellow to be much lighter up here. And then, as I'm working my way down towards the middle, I want it more saturated, more full of orange. You might have a different technique on how you paint, but now there's less on there, so I'm going to start moving it up into here. Naturally, some more down here. If it's too dry, get some more paint on your brush, more water on your brush. I mean, and more paint if you need it. Went off the side there a little bit, but that's okay. I'll be painting some cool colors there later. And get a little bit more on the sides here. And sort of blend it together. This is, there's some lighter parts and some darker parts. I'm going down in here like this. Looks a little messy doing it like this, but when I overlap the red on top of it, it'll make sense why we're doing it this way. And then into some red. Red often comes out looking you know, not very dark at first, so and you're doing red on top of white, so it'll look kind of pinkish. You get along that edge there. You know, blend it up into the uh, orange. 
And then you'll end up with some red orange in here, just like we have yellow orange in here, yellow, yellow orange, orange, red, orange, red. We'll get some more red on top of this red to darken it up so it's not too pink looking. And blend some more red up into this orange so I can get some red orange to show up. Very lightly, I'm going like this to blend it together. And all right, so once you get this all painted in, then you start working your stem. Any parts you want darker, just paint more on top of. Paint your grass. If you're not using paints in your coloring, then you, know, you might not want to color too dark with your crayons because you need to be able to go on top with a Sharpie or something later. Also, um, your sky. So, you know, side to side at an angle. It's up to you. Um, me, on that one I showed you at the beginning of the video, I kind of went like this. You got to be real careful painting around your pumpkin when you're doing your sky. So. You know, take your time painting around the edges. Don't go too fast. So I did like that, and um, I also blended some purple. Sort of blended the two together like this. Fill in the white spaces. Not enough water on the brush. It won't spread well if you don't put enough water on the brush. If you're coloring with crayon. You can also do the blending. So you get in your sky, comes out too light, you just need to put more on there. So your grass, your sky, let's fast forward. Um, when you finally have this done, this one I, I actually painted vertically, whereas this one I was painting horizontally. It's up to you. You choose which way you want to do yours, okay? But eventually you'll have it all painted in. Notice I added a little more darker and left this kind of light over here. Makes it look more three-dimensional, okay? Once you have this part all finished, then you want to use a marker or a Sharpie. I have a Sharpie here. Here's a regular marker. And you can start doing some details, uh, abstract details and patterns and whatnot inside the areas. So you can use the marker, sort of get your details going. I always like to trace the shape of the pumpkin and the stem first. And, you know, where it separates the grass from the sky and all those little areas and be careful that you trace all your lines carefully not to leave any colors of the pumpkin beyond this part once you have this all traced then you can start adding details. And let's fast forward. And this is not the pattern you have to do. You can certainly borrow any ideas you see here, but I put stars here and some little wiggly lines alternating stripes and dots, stripes and dots. And I put some different patterns. Just use your imagination. Some little dots here, less here, and none here. Use your imagination on what kind of patterns you want inside your pumpkin and for your sky. It could be swirly wind. You can have lines going left or right or zigzags or straight. It's totally up to you. All right? All right, can't wait to see your creations. Take a picture and send it to me or upload it to Google Classroom. And have a good time with this. Happy Autumn Pumpkins <laughs> with some abstract details and designs. All right, see you all later. Bye-bye.